everyone welcome back to my channel gp cooks today we're doing a 10 most common gastroparesis questions that i've gotten or that i've seen around i keep trying to do a q a and no one asked me questions so if this didn't cover your questions please comment down below um comment on my instagram or dm my instagram so I'm open to any and all questions about gastroparesis, POTS, um, anorexia recovery, anything, mental health, anything. So if you want to know anything, just make sure you let me know and I will give you the answer. Today we're talking about the most common ones that I've gotten. So first, can you eat by mouth? So yes, I can eat by mouth. Um, most people with gastroparesis actually eat a full diet Um by mouth but since i have a feeding tube people often wonder if i eat i do eat um most days and if i am in a flare or i'm not feeling well and i don't eat enough calories then i run feeds um i can eat while feeds are running also people wonder about that so if i have formula running through my j-tube i can still enjoy a meal so yeah um the second one is gastroparesis and weight so a lot of things people would expect, oh, she can't eat, her stomach's paralyzed, she only eats a little bit, that I would be losing weight drastically, but that isn't the case. Um, a lot of gastroparesis warriors actually have um, weight gain. So, because even though, or say tubes aside, like before I got my tube, before I got bad enough for a tube, I would eat as much as I could during the day without throwing up. I'd eat my low fat, low fiber, all of it, and I would still either maintain weight or gain weight. And that is because it's because even though we're eating, we're still eating calories and it, we're eating like a lot of carbs, a lot of sugar, a lot of liquid calories, um, not much exercise can be done and it's hard to eat protein because you're so full and your stomach is so full that if you choose to have a protein, you'll probably only have one bite and then you're done for the rest of the night. So, but say I eat like a bagel, I could probably have half of it or maybe the whole thing. And that's not to say, oh, don't eat those foods or you'll gain weight because it doesn't really matter if you gain weight. Like, you're beautiful, so it's fine. Um, What exactly is a gastroparesis diet? So... A gastroparesis diet, as I have pointed out many times on this channel, is low fat, low fiber. So for me, I have 4.5 grams of fat per serving max and 3 grams of fiber per serving max. I, don't, I have 50 or less grams of fat a day and 15 or less grams of fiber a day. Now, people are like, oh, okay, and then they go and read the back. But a lot of times when I was at school and stuff... People will be like, can you eat that? Can you drink that? Are you sure you can eat that? Oh, why can't you eat that? Like, people really have no idea what they're putting into their mouth. So, just to, like, give you a cheat sheet, fiber is raw fruits and vegetables. So, if I, I can't eat raw fruits, I can't eat raw vegetables, I can't eat whole wheat, I can't eat um, oatmeal, I can't eat um, multigrain, I can't eat nuts or seeds or... Um, uh, like, uh, granola, no, anything like that, like, nothing, nothing, nothing like that, no salad, anything, so then, low fat, obviously, fried, anything fried is a no, um, anything that is, you know, I can't even eat healthy fats, like, I can't have avocado, no peanut butter, I have to eat different kind of peanut butter, like I said, no nuts, um, Low fat everything, low fat cheese, low fat sour cream, low fat cream cheese, low fat everything. Um, even some pastas are too high in fiber, so and some gravies or sauces are too high in fat because of all the oil. So, you really, really need to be careful and you need to cook for yourself, um, or tell people what you need to be cooked for you without oil, any of that. Um, this one's funny, but I get it all the time. Is like, do you poop? Like, um, this is it's interesting because yes, I do poop, but 
honestly, there's times where I'll go like four days without pooping. And I'm on like a remedy of laxatives, not just one laxative. Like I take a few every single day to make sure I go to the bathroom. And sometimes that's not even enough. And I need to like drink a whole magnesium citrate just to go to the bathroom regularly. So I do use the bathroom, but it's not like normal people can just go to the bathroom. Like I, I need a lot of help. How often do you exercise? Can you exercise? So yes, I can exercise with um, a feeding tube. I can exercise with gastrocrisis and I can exercise with POTS. These are actually, exercise is good for these illnesses, but sometimes I can't because either my tube is hurting or it's leaking a lot, or I, um, I'm dizzy or I'm, I'm nauseous. Stuff like that prevents me from exercising. But this new year, I've decided to do um, at least one yoga session a day and one walk a day around my neighborhood. And it's going well so far. I'm trying to build my stamina up very slowly because it's completely diminished. Because back when I was, you know, really sick with POTS and gastroparesis, I couldn't exercise at all besides physical therapy. But now I'm trying to build my stamina up and start um, exercising again. But yeah, I, I feel like you shouldn't prevent you. Um, can I recover? So, you always hear me say about anorexia, oh yes, you can recover, but what about gastroparesis? What about POTS? So, my doctor has told me before that I will never be able to eat a carefree diet. Now, this is weird because... I go through phases where I'm fully tube fed. I completely rely on my tube and I don't eat. I have rely on, there's a phase where I can eat on the gastroparesis diet only. And now, and then there's phases where I'm eating now, how it's a little bit of gastroparesis diet, a little bit of normal people diet. So I'll have like one cheat thing a day. Like, like I'll either have like some french fries or a piece of pizza or, you know, cookies or something. I usually bake myself so I can like kind of know how much butter goes into stuff. Cause for me, that's really it. Like I don't really cook with a lot of oil. So when I bake, I usually use applesauce instead of butter or mashed banana, something like that. But if I want to put butter in, I do. And I just don't eat a lot of my baked good in like one sitting. But I, I do eat off the diet sometimes, but I can't just eat all my meals and snacks without looking at nutrition facts because my doctor, I did that. I did do that and I kept relapsing. I kept needing to use a tube. I kept throwing up and my doctor was like, he sat me down and he drew me a diagram that said, your stomach is still paralyzed even after the pyloroplasty, which I've talked about before on this channel. So he said, even though you had the pyloroplasty and your pylorus is open, my digestive tract is still paralyzed and I can't just be eating whatever I want. So that was a real wake up call. It's like, oh, I was giving myself these flares because I thought I was cured when I wasn't. So in that same visit, he told me I will never be able to eat a carefree diet and then I will always have to, you know, be careful what I eat. But um, I won't be stuck on a tube forever and I won't be stuck just in a strict gastroparesis diet like I was before, I will be able to cheat, just not as much. Do you take medication? Yes, I take, um, I take medication for my motility. I take medication for acid reflux. I take medication for nausea. I take laxatives. I take um, a beta blocker. I take steroids for my blood pressure. I take um, psychiatric medicine. And I take, um, a vitamin and I take another, um, something for my stomach. So I take a lot of medicine and, um, I mean, it helps because that one medicine for my motility really, really helps me go to the bathroom and it really helps me push everything along how it's supposed to be inside of my stomach. Um, now this one, when did they decide to give you a tube? This one I get a lot from other people with gastroparesis because they're looking to get a tube. Um, they decided I needed a tube. Well, when I was 16, I had an uh, NG tube at CHOP and they decided that I needed that after my gastric 
emptying scan, which was very severe results. So they gave me a tube that day. Um, and then I got it out and then I kept needing a tube again and again. Every admission to CHOP, I'd have a tube for two weeks or a month and then I'd be sent home without it. And then the most recent was these tubes, but I had the NJ, as we all know, in the summer. Um, or actually, it's like a year coming up. I had it in March, right when the pandemic hit. I was in the hospital and we didn't even know about the pandemic yet, so everybody was like visiting me. But um, yeah, so I think I got it placed in March of last year and then I had it until July. And that they decided I needed because I was, I was losing a lot of weight at that point, not gaining. And I was fainting. I fainted in class and I was like, my blood pressure was low. Everything was low and I couldn't keep any food down and I was throwing up medication. So they were like, you know what, we, she needs to take her meds. She needs to have nutrition. So they put me on an NJ tube. And then when we realized this was going to be a long-term thing, they put, they decided to give me my, a GJ. And the GJ didn't work because my anatomy is wrong for a GJ, apparently. So then they can't, they just sent me home that day when I was all ready to have stay. And then they decided to go with surgery instead of IR. So surgery actually placed these two tubes because they knew I needed both. They knew I needed the G to drain to manage my symptoms. And they knew I needed the J in my intestine to feed. Um, does my gastroparesis affect my pot? Um, yes, it does because my, I, I need a lot of calories to function, um, because my body still doesn't trust me from anorexia and from gastroparesis. So when I'm short on calories, my body goes into defense mode, like immediately. So if I don't eat a lot one day because my stomach was hurting or I threw up a lot or I just did not feel good and I had to take like four rounds of nausea medicine, then I'm going to be dizzy the next day. So when that happens, I definitely run feeds and I drink as much as I can. Sometimes I run water through my tube too, just because I know I can't get it in any other way. Um, but yeah, that's where the feeds come in, but it does affect my pots definitely. And what do you wish people knew? Um, this is the question I came up with. Um, I wish people understood how life-changing this disease is. Because it's now that the pandemic is getting better, it's going to be hard to go out to eat and, like, wander. You know, a lot of people get annoyed with me. Like, oh, she can't eat there. She can't eat this. She can't eat that. Oh, we can't buy that. And it's like, how frustrated do you think I am like I'm very frustrated with this and it really like it's awful it's just horrible this disease and I just wish people knew that I'm fighting I'm fighting as hard as I can and I am tired and you know I sleep a lot and I um people think I'm lazy but I'm not lazy I'm just so tired like my body is constantly fighting itself like you know, my body gives itself burns, it gives itself infections, it gives itself nausea and all of this stuff. And I'm fighting every single day, every minute of the day. So I'm not lazy. I'm literally fighting my own body to stay alive. And that is a lot of hard work. Like, I'm not trying to, like, pity party here. But it's a lot of hard work. And I know everybody else with the chronic illness will understand this, is that we're not lazy. We're not trying to get attention we're not, um, you know, we're not on a diet. We're not trying to lose weight. That's not why we're not eating the cookie and the fries and the milkshake. That's not why. We're not eating it because we know that if we eat it, we'll throw up or we'll be bloated or we'll be in pain or we'll be nauseous. And it will be horrible for a few days if we slip up like that. So it's really stop judging us and start trying to understand what is actually happening to us. And yeah, just be there and be supportive. So, if anybody else has anything, if you have gastroparesis or POTS or any chronic illness at all or mental illness, comment down below what you wish people knew and maybe I'll make a video of a compilation about it. So, don't thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.